So as an application of the concept of the flooding to determine how big our gas absorption tower is or our stripping tower is, we have this particular problem. Now for this problem, ammonia is being absorbed in a tower using pure water at 25 degrees Celsius and 180 m pressure absolute. Now the feed rate is 2,000 pound mass per hour and that is 653.2 kilogram per hour and it contains three mole percent ammonia in air. So in this case class, you want to eliminate the contaminant ammonia in air by scrubbing it with pure water. So that's actually the main application of gas absorption, taking out contaminants from the air uh, gas contaminant mixture. So you want to take away the ammonia from the air ammonia mixture. The process design specifies that the liquid to gas ratio flow rate should be 2.2 is to 1. Or that's your GL to GG equal to 2.2 to 1. And your packing material is that uh, of 1 inch interlux packing. So we have a pack tower using this particular uh, packing material. You are to calculate the pressure drop in the packing the gas mass velocity at flooding. And using 60% of the flooding velocity, calculate the pressure drop, the gas and liquid flows, and the tower diameter. So the very important part of this actually uh, problem exercise is the determination of the tower diameter based on flooding conditions. So before we transfer to the jump board, I'd like you to get a screenshot of the problem. Uh, that is why you'll be guided on how are we supposed to solve this problem later on. Okay? And please, if you have your book there by John, please, beside you. That way we can use the table that I have shown to you in the slides together with the flooding correlation uh, diagram. Okay, please get a copy of Genku, please, whether it's hard copy or soft copy. That way you can supply me with the information needed. Okay, now I will transfer to the Jamboard then. Okay, wait long. Okay. Make sure. So based on the problem, we have this as given. So based on our discussion, if we are to illustrate our gas absorption tower, we have this. So this is your streams one and these are your streams two i'd like to use this one it's easier so you have the gas here entering the tower this is the gas leaving the tower this is where your solvent is introduced and this is where your solvent carrying the ammonia leaves the tower now based on what is given in the problem can you give me the type of packing material that is being used can you just type on the chat box So the type of packing material use is? You did not take a screenshot of the problem. So one inch interlock packing. Thank you, Ken. Okay, I'll show momentarily the problem for those who are not able to take the screenshot. So I want you to have a copy of the problem so you can follow through what we are doing. Okay, that's the problem. Take a screenshot of the problem. Okay, so now we go back to our jump board. 
So your packing material is one inch interlocks. Okay. Uh, what are the information stated in terms of the streams? So you have ammonia to be a uh, absorbed using pure water. The feed rate is 2,000 2, pound mass per hour. So you have the equivalent in kilograms per hour. So if you'll stick to the uh, English units, so you will have 2,000 pound mass per hour for the feed rate. What would that then be? Where would I place that 2,000 pound mass per hour? Where will I place the 2,000 pound mass, mass per hour here on the streams? Uh, can you see the, yes, I'm there. So where, where am I going to place it? L2. L2. L2 is your solvent, Ken. It is your solvent. The problem says uh, the feed rate is 2,000 pound mass per hour and it contains 3 mole percent ammonia. So this is a problem on gas absorption. So where will I place the 2,000? Okay, correct, Ivan. It should be placed on the <clears throat> B1. So this should be 2,000 pound mass per hour. What is the corresponding concentration here? Y1. Based on what you have, the screenshot that you have taken. That's 0 0.03. Says there it's 3% ammonia. So that's correct, Kyle. It's 0 0.03. Now, what else can you pick out out of the problem? Liquid to gas flow rate is 2.2, right? So we can have liquid to gas flow rate. Now, that refers to, in this case, that refers to, so it's written there as GL over GG as 2.2. This is also equivalent based on our representation here as liquid. So our liquid feed is our solvent, L2, and our gas is V1 fed to the column. So that's the ratio. 2 is 2.2 uh, is to 1. What else is given? Okay, the pressure is 180 M, 25 degrees Celsius for your solvent, which is pure water. So if this is pure water, this tells us that your X2 is zero. It doesn't contain ammonia. And the process is to operate at 25 degrees Celsius, same as the condition of the feed and a pressure of 180 M. So you are required for, so what are you required for? Pressure drop, gas and liquid flows, and power diameter. So you have three. So you have to indicate that all in your solution. So you have delta P. Liquid and gas flow, so referring to this L1 and V2. And you have that very important power diameter. So liquid and gas flows. Uh, by the way, it refers to the L1 and V2, all the flow rates here possible Okay, in this case. So we go now to the solution of the problem. So if you recall our discussion, the very first thing that you are to determine when you intend to determine the size of the column is the pressure drop. What information do you need to find the pressure drop? 
What information do you need? So you have the formula as 0.115 times the packing factor. So based on our slides, times the packing factor raised to what? What's our formula for that? Is anybody able to get it from our slides? No one. So let me just go back to it. I'll just get it from here. So it's 0.115 times the packing factor raised to 0.7. So we raise this to 0.7. Okay? That's it. Now, how do I find the pressure drop? Where will I go? I need to find the packing factor. So where will I get the packing factor? That should be taken from a table, right? It should be taken from a table. I'll show to you the table just in case you don't have your gem two please with you. So we'll find that very important table. Okay, so this is the table you find for one inch interlocks. You have here interlocks, Norton interlocks. See that? We'll settle for the one, the 2T, Norton interlocks packing, which is 2T. And you will find the packing factor for that to be here on the last column to be 17. So since you're using the English set of units, we'll use the English unit here for the packing factor. And that's 17. Now, can you see it? Norton Interlux, it's in the structured packing material. Your packing factor for that is 17 per foot. You also ought to get that as well in your uh, handbook. So I'll go back to the jam board and write our FP. So FP is equal to 0.17. So your pressure drop here will be 0.115 times 0.17 raised to 0.7, giving you a pressure drop of, can you solve for the pressure drop? You have 0 0.033. Thank you, Kyle. So you have 0 0.033. Um, okay, I got it right. So 0 0.033. Now what are we going to do after you have taken the pressure drop? Actually, this is already the answer to the first requirement. If you have the pressure drop, you can get the Flooding linear velocity in this case. But before you go to that, I'd like to show to you the appropriate figure where you're going to get the flooding velocity. So I'll go back to our slide. So this is our slide. And we're going to use the appropriate Figure. So in this case, this is for random packing. So we're not going to use that because our interlox packing material is in the structured packing group. So meaning you're going to use this one. They look the same, but only in the graduations and the scaling of the values do they differ. So this one is for your structured packing. You already have the value of the delta P. So the value of 0 0.03 is somewhere here below. So this is 0 0.05. So probably if you'll have this distance here as this must be 0 0.025, so zero 0.033 is somewhere here. So you're the one who's going to approximate where the delta P is going to fall. So you have, this is uh, more or less, if I'm going to, Annotate, it would be more or less somewhere here, class. Uh, if this is 0 0.025, it's 0 0.033 somewhere here. But not really this one. So, the amula na siya. We're going to approximate it. Okay? 
But what is important in here, why I went back here, by the way, it's inch water per foot of uh, packing material use. The, the units I used a while ago is lacking of the unit of pressure because it's delta P. It should be the pressure drop. So in this case, you need to take note of this. We have to determine the flow parameter. That way, using the flow parameter and the delta P computed, which is 0 0.033, we can find the capacity parameter. Okay? So I will please get a screenshot of this. It's GL over GG times rho G over rho L raised to 0.5. That's our flow parameter. Okay? We need to determine that. So I'll go back to our Jamboard. So solving for flow parameter. So your flow parameter, I'll just place this as x because you're going to base your x coordinate there is equal to the ratio, the liquid to gas ratio multiplied to the density of the gas over the density of the liquid raised to 0.5. Now, so far in the problem, you're already provided with the GL to GG and that's 2.2. So this is already known. What you need to know is the density of the gas and the density of the liquid. So in this case, the density of water is the density of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Hi. Can you please get the density of water at 25 degrees Celsius from any property table that you have there? Let me get it also from my end. We have already the density of water, so at 25 degrees Celsius, okay. 0 0.9970, that's correct. So this is the density of the liquid. Point nine nine seven zero. So this particular density value has the unit gram per ml. So can you please convert this in cubic feet, pound mass per cubic feet because we're using English units here. What is the value in pound mass per cubic feet? Okay, we have 62.25. Thank you, Maisel. How are you? Hello, Miss. I'm okay, Miss. Uh, that's good. Okay. So, pound mass per cubic feet. So, you have that density already. Now, for the density of the gas, if you notice, class, there was no mention in the problem as for the density of the gas, knowing that your gas is in the form of a gas mixture, a mixture of air and, uh, in this case, ammonia. So we'll just base it on the uh, major component that is present in our uh, gas, which is that of air, because your ammonia is just 3 mole percent in our ammonia air mixture. So can you get 
So we'll just approximate it anyhow. The value will not differ that much if the problem does not give. But oftentimes, the problem gives it to us. So for air, at 25 degrees Celsius, we will use its density for the rho g, the density of the gas. Can you get the density of air at 25 degrees Celsius? Okay, I have it here. It's 1.19 uh, gram per liter. So kindly have this converted in pound mass per cubic feet. Okay, sakto na siya itcholo, 1.19. We'll have this converted to pound mass per cubic feet. So your units have to agree. So in this case, you have 0 0.0, please just check, 0 0.0739 pound mass per cubic feet. I got it, I got it from Google. So the density of air at 25 degrees Celsius in pound mass per cubic feet is 0 0.0739. So we're going to use that. So for your capacity parameter, we can now solve for this one. So we use the value of the ratio of the liquid to gas flow rates, which is 2.2. And we'll have the raw G. We'll use the 0 0.0739. And we'll divide it by uh, 62.25. Uh, since we are dealing here with ratio, by the way, class, if it's difficult for you to convert, it's okay. Because anyway, your conversion in the numerator and in the denominator will just cancel. So you can deal with, as long as the units of the densities are the same, it doesn't matter, okay? Since we have, we have here a ratio. So your capacity parameter in this case is? Is this correct? 0 0.0758, the one that can't gave. Uh, my answer is point zero one nine seventy. Okay, so Mel uh, is correct. So this would be our uh, flow parameter. So kindly take note of the X and the delta P because we're going to go back to our figure for the flooding correlation here. So point zero one nine. 70. Okay? Sige. So now we go to the Jamboard. Uh, we're already in the Jamboard. I'd like to go to the slide. <clears throat> yes. 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 Miss, ang sa X bila? Uh -huh. Ang sa Ang sa X bila, miss? Hindi, 0 0.5 ang exponent. Uh, or 0 0.7. Kaya ang sa okay. formula mo, may 0 0.5 and then pang solve, nag 0 0.7. Okay. I, I missed that one. So it should be point okay. 0.5. Okay. Sala si Miss. Nandaran ko di sa packing factor. So this should be point 0.5. So it should be the square root of that. So 0 0.0739 divided by 62.25. And then we get the square root of the answer. And multiply it by 2.2. Oh, check to second. Sa lagi ni Miss Ali. Okay. So we have 0 0.0758. So take note of that, 0 0.0758 and 0 0.033. Go back to our figure. Uh, 
and again we check if we're using that of the structured packing. So if an I annotate here, probably the 0 0.033 is somewhere here. And it's 0 0.07. So this is uh five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the point zero five. The point zero seven, six, seven, point zero seven, five, no, so it's in between. And you go up and approximate more or less where is where is your point zero three two. I'm not sure if that you will agree that it's somewhere here. Your delta P is 0 0.033 with this much of the flow parameter, which is 0 0.0758. So I'll just approximate it in here. Your capacity parameter then will be somewhere here. Okay, that's where your capacity parameter. And this is your formula for the capacity parameter. Kyle, kindly take note of the formula. I will miss again probably the correct exponents there. Okay, so we'll go back to our jump board and then substitute or equate this value of the capacity parameter to this expression for it in here. Okay, so we'll just settle for around 0 0.028. But this, if you are in right on the middle, it's 0 0.3. So 0 0.28. Okay. Where are my markings? 0 0.28. So we'll go to the jump board. Your capacity parameter. is more or less 0.28. So you can even write 0.3 if you want. And this is equal to, so based on the formula that is written, this is our y. So it's the linear velocity of the gas. Uh, were you able to get it, Kyle? What is the expression of the flow parameter? Okay, I'll just get it. You have rho g over rho l minus rho g raised to 0.5. Hmm. Why am I going back to this? Eight class. Am I on the? So you are to multiply this with rho g over rho l minus rho g raised to 0.5. Then you have the packing factor raised to 0.5. Then you have the kinematic viscosity raised to 0.5. I'm not sure if it's all 0.5. Were you able to check it based on the figure? Um, 0 0.05 sa last na term is. 0.5. Ah, okay. So, try. You have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.05. Okay. So, that's what I missed. So this should be 0 0.05. Your goal here is you will find this one, the linear velocity of flooding. Okay, so the value of 0.28 will be equated to this. All the rest of the value should be known. That way, we'll be left with the linear velocity. So in this case, class, uh, the packing factor is known. The densities we have known, we have already determined. So we go now to the kinematic viscosity. 
Now, the kinematic viscosity will be the kinematic viscosity of water. And we can determine first the viscosity of water. So, mu at 25 degrees Celsius for H2O. Can you please give me the viscosity at 25 degrees Celsius for H2O? So at 25 degrees Celsius, uh, you have, uh, we'll have this in centipois. Okay, 0.890 centipois. Okay. 0.890 centipois for water. But this particular unit of centipois is, ano, this is for SI and we're dealing with English units. So there's a corresponding, um, so I say there's a corresponding conversion from centipois to pound mass per uh, R per feet squared. So there you have to use that one. So let us go back to the slide and check for the follow, for that particular conversion. Okay, let me check. Structured packing. I'm wondering why this will not move here. Okay. Here. Hmm. It's not here anymore. If we have to convert it all in English, it has to be multiplied to 28,570. I can't find it anymore here on the slide. Because, uh, Okay, it's already in height. So let's just go back to the jump board anyway. It's just the conversion, but it's 28,570 to convert from centipois to pound mass per hour per feet squared. It should be in English. So converting this to that set of English units, this has to be multiplied to 28,750, I think. So this would be equal to, can you give me please the value? Or if you have your, Gianco please there with you, you have a sample problem. He has a sample problem there, which has this particular conversion. So you can check on that as well. So if you multiply 0 0.890 CP to 28,750, this would be, Twenty five thousand five hundred eighty seven point five. Okay. Uh does anybody there has a John who please? Because I don't want us to use something that uh my I may have given wrongly. So can you please check first? I give you two minutes if this is really the conversion of the centipois to the English set of units. I'll try to check it also in this slide here, on the slide that I have, because I can't find it anymore. Okay, we'll check here on the other slides with Kasa. I'm sure it's just here. <clears throat> I 
I hope my memory serves me right. It's a sample problem on flooding velocities. Can you just check it? I'm also looking for it in here. Now, excuse me, Miss. Ah, uh, show me the example ten point six dash one. Ah, uh, can you please check the conversion? Na lang. Is it twenty eight thousand? Nang bali, Miss. Ang gamit niya ni centi stocks. Mandi, Miss. Gin divide yah lang point eight nine three seven sa no. zero point nine nine seven o eight. Ah, uh, we're using now the the viscosity. Okay, we're we're using the viscosity. Ah, uh, we're going to convert the viscosity in centipede to centistoke. So doing that will need the density. Oh, uh, correct, class. So it's it's in here. Wait, ha! I found it already. You have to convert your ah, uh, where is it? The mu. to pound mass per hour per feet. Now, it's already given as, is, as it is. Wait, class, ha? Huh? Okay. The 28,572 is in the conversion of the interfacial tension, I think, in dying per centimeter to pound mass per hour squared. So, hindi na siya amo. Uh, Maisel? Is it you, Maisel? Uh, miss. Okay. So, what was used there for the... Is it really the kinematic viscosity that was used directly? Nang... Oo, oh, miss. Pali, ang mu, gin mu over density, uh, miss. Oh, yeah. Pag solve something. Sang sintestok. So, your mu... Uh -uh. Wait, ha? The mu that was used is in centipua. So my concern is that our mu is centipua. So I want to convert it to English prior to uh, dividing it by the density. So the centipua unit was uh, used directly. It was not converted. I think there's a certain conversion there. What is the conversion that was used? I don't have my Jan Pupis here. It's in school. What's the conversion that was used? That's correct. Your kinematic viscosity is your, this one is equal to mu divided by the density. You cannot divide something in, uh, ano, in SI, the centipede, to the English unit, which is in pound mass per cubic feet. So what was the conversion for the mu first? Is the mu that is given in centipede measel in the sample problem, and it was directly divided by the density in English. Gin directly along means ng divide the density. So there's no conversion of centipede to English set of units. Well, well, miss. Okay, sige. So wala na sa conversion. So we will use the centipede directly and we'll just divide it by the density to give us the centistokes because that's my... Oh, oh Miss, I'm not going to I'm not going to Sige, sige. So thank you, Maisel. So in this case, there's no need for us to convert the centipede unit to centistokes. So using the centipede that we have here, so 890 centipede, we divide it by the density of water that we used a while ago. So the density of water that we got is in pound mass. The density of water that was used, Maisel, I think is in SI. Is it in... Uh, uh, Miss SI, SI uh, please. Okay. So it's in SI, so 0. 0.9970. So that's okay then. If we're not going to use the English, so 0. 0.9970 gram per ml. This should give you a unit in kinematic viscosity of synthestokes. Okay, can you give me the value here? So it was really good that we checked on it because 
I myself is really forgetful about conversions. So you have mu over density of 0.90 divided by 0.9970. How much is our uh, kinematic viscosity? Uh, please uh, supply the answer there. Uh, just write it on the chat box. Excuse me. What's your answer in synthesis Stokes? 0.89863 or 26? 0.89 63 0.890 divided by 0 0.9970 0 0.8926 okay we have that then you go back to this capacity parameter and substitute everything so with the value of 0.28, we equate it to Vg, that's the linear velocity of the gas, and everything, the density of the gas, uh, 0 0.0739, divided by density of water, 62.25, Minus 0 0.0739. We raise this to 0 0.5. Then we have the packing factor, which is 17. Check. Yeah, it's 17. We raise that to 0 0.5 as well. And we have here the kinematic viscosity of 0 0.8926. So in here, you'll get the linear velocity of the gas. This is the linear velocity of the gas at flooding condition. So meaning at this velocity, your column is said to be flooded. Uh, can you please uh, get the answer for the linear velocity? Use this uh, equation that we have here. The last variable is erase 0 0.005. Okay. Thank you, Mel. Hi, 0 0.05. Ah, 0 0.05. Okay, I missed. So that would be 0.28. We divide by 0.8926 raised to 0 0.05. We also divide it by 0.17 raised to 0.5. We multiply it with 62.25 minus 0 0.0739 raised to 0 0.5. And we divide by 0 0.739 raised to 0 0.5. My value here is 19.815. I will check if that is your value as well. 19.815. Nineteen point eight one five. So this is since this is linear velocity, this must be feet per hour. Okay. Now based on okay, correct. So based on what you have learned in your thermodynamics, you already have the uh linear velocity. How are you supposed to find the cross sectional area of a particular section where something where your fluid is flowing? This is your linear velocity. How will you find the cross-sectional area which will lead to the diameter of the column? What do we do? Okay, before that, since this is the velocity at flooding, 
So with this velocity, your column is already flooded. This is the linear velocity of the feed gas to the column. We need to, based on what the problem is saying, we're only going to use 60% of this flooding velocity. So we're going to... Um, okay, wait, Kasha. Okay, so you can see now my screen. We're going to multiply this to 60%, okay? So you have 0.60 of VG is equal to uh, your answer there times 0 0.6. So 11.8890. So this is feet per hour. Now, what do we do next? If this is our 60% of the linear flooding velocity, how do we find the cross-sectional area? Velocity. Velocity times what? Velocity times area. Velocity times area is equal to volumetric flow rate, right? So area is equal to the volumetric flow rate. This time, since this is at flooding condition, we're going to use the volumetric flow rate of the gas. The, the problem gives us the, in this case, it gives us the, this one, the mass flow rate. So what do we do with the mass flow rate? So it's 2,000 pound mass per hour. Now, if you're going to divide this, So if you're going to divide that volumetric, uh, this particular uh, mass flow rate with the density, the density of the gas, which is in pound mass per cubic feet, is 0 0.0739. This is in pound mass per cubic feet. We get to convert from mass flow rate to volumetric flow rate, which will lead us to the area. Okay, so this is, so if you divide 2000 by 0 0.7039, that should give you 27,063. Twenty seven thousand sixty three point sixty. So this is now in cubic feet per hour. Now in this side, you will have the area. You multiply it with the velocity. Velocity, which is just sixty percent of the flooding. We don't use the flooding velocity because our column will be flooded. So at this much lesser velocity, which is eleven point eight. 890 feet per hour, you equate it with 27063.60 cubic feet per hour. So you cancel the per hour unit, you'll be left with an area of 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 76.36 square feet. Okay, wait. Okay. And then Kent already answered us the diameter. So your area is pi d squared over 4. So our answer there, which is 2276.36, should be equated to it. The diameter then would be 
uh, times 4 divided by the pi. And we take the square root. So, why is it very big? Wait, guys. 53.83. Okay. 53.83 feet. Why is this so big? Weight class half. Is our computation here correct? We can't have that uh, relatable value for diameter. Oh. Um, can you check, Maisel, as to the formula of the capacity parameter? If this is correct, I am in doubt of that particular figure, whether the exponents are correct. Are the values that we have here 2,000 pound mass per hour to be converted to uh, volume should be divided by the density. It should be this one. And we have this one divided by 11, we have this. This is too big for diameter. There must be something wrong here in the formula. Or maybe something wrong with conversion. And there's nothing wrong with conversion because densities anyhow without being converted would just be the same. Are the values that I have here correct? Class, please check. Because a diameter of 53.84 feet is very big. Even if you're going to divide it by 3.28, 16 meters your column is 16 meters that's too much is my is the value that i'm using here mesel can you check i i project the problem mesel ha if i have the correct values in the type written problem maybe i don't have the correct values there sige miss that's the that's the given in the problem nang pareho siya miss Ang lait lang ang feed rate. Nga. Kay Dere. Ay, ang no given, Miss Lain, di. Kay 2,000, at Dere, Miss, 144, 1,440 ang given. 1,440, but it's in pound mass per hour. Ah, 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 Miss. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. 1,400. Ah, ah, ang iyang given, Miss. Okay. What's then, the... ang iyang percentage, miss, 50% ang there is a Jan Kuplis. But this problem, I think, is also based on Jan Kuplis. This one is 60. So, th there's not much uh -uh. difference. What's the computer diameter there in the sample problem? Um, Ang diameter is 1.446 feet, miss. But that is very small. Wait lang. Ah, okay. Kent is saying it's uh, 1.446. So, can you check in which part I'll, I'll project the solution, Maisel, ha? Maybe a wrong formula or what? Because these types of problems are just procedural in nature. We determine first the pressure drop so that we'll get the mm -hmm. flow parameter. So, the flow parameter, we just substitute the ratio. The ratio there that is in the problem more or less is just one digit, right? One digit lang uh -huh. man. And two then, lang siya, miss. Uh, two. So this Gamay is point two. You have this. Mm -mm. Your flow parameter is in decimal, right? Small value. Uh -huh, miss. Okay. Then we go to the capacity parameter. The computed value of the linear velocity, R is 
uh, where is that? It's in here. Can we check? It's 19.815. More or less, the linear velocity that you have there is this one also? Nang, ano siya, miss? 6.663 feet ah. per second. Siya galing yan, miss. Feet per second. Wait, ha? Nakagamay. Pila siling mo ang linear velocity? Nang 6.663 feet per second, miss. But we have comparable values with the kinematic viscosity. Comparable maning values siya. Miss, ang 0.17 bala, miss. Uh -oh. uh, F, F na. Oo, uh -oh, miss. Oo. Uh -oh. Nang amog na siguro ang layo, miss. Kaya sa Gian ko, please, bilang miss, nang 56. Saya. Ah, can I change the packing material? Oo, uh -oh, miss. Oo, uh -oh, miss. Amo na ang dako na difference, good miss. 0.56, this mine is 0.17 only. Chak, to man ang kwa. 56 whole number, Samis. Oo, uh -oh. hindi siya. Wait, wait ha. Wait lang. 56. Ba si 17 ni class? Eh, wait class 17 ha. siguro, miss. Hindi, 0.17. <laughs> My goodness. Tingala ko nga, hindi giniya bilibabo lang answer na. To niya, wait lang. Girl, check ha. I read it. I go to the table. I unlock class 17. Wala bang kamo ba reklamo? Aragali o? As I've said, these types of problems are procedural. Pero magsala mo lang substitute mo. 17 class, hindi 0.17. Ngibotang ko 0.17. Ara o? 17. So, okay, okay lang man ka mo nga 0.17 din butang ko. Wala niyo kong correctionan. Please, next time, check the values that I'm putting in. It's 17. So, muna dako-dako. I go back, ha? I-redutan eh. Dali mo lang ni. You help me out here. So, this should be 0.70. Ah, wala naman ko. 0.17. So, this is 17. Okay? So, this is 17. So, pila ni, madako ni siyang value niya sa capacity parameter mag ni. Can you please help me out? Pila ni siya, ang 80. You have 0.8356. See, 0.8356. Ato na siya sa babaw. 0.8356. Now, take note of this. If this is 0.8356, and please take note of this 0.0758, I'll go back to the graph, ha? Structured packing. Okay, so this one. 0.8356. Ari na di siya, oh. Dari na siya sa babaw. 0.5 ni... I'll just use the annotations. If this is 0.5 and this is approximate ko lang 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.78. You go up, you go up until you reach 0 0.8, to no? 0 0.8 plus. Ara siya, oh. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. 0 0.7, 5, 0.0758 to siya. So, dere. I go up and an AP of 0.856. So, ah, miss. si Amone. More or less Amone siya. So, your capacity parameter is not as small as the one you got. Ari siya, oh, dere na siya dampe. O, dere siya. So, we'll just approximate it to 1.3. Okay? Mon to 1.3, ha? Let's see if our answer would be believable now. 1.3. So your, your y is 1.3. Not 0 0.28. 1.3.
So this is one, that one. So this is 1.3. Please help me out here. Can you solve for the VG? I'll solve also from my end. We'll see if the linear velocity will be a lot smaller. 1.3. 0.8926 raised to 0 0.05 divided by, uh, by the way, sorry, here we go again. The packing factor is only seven, is 17. 17 raised to 0.5. Thanks. Okay. Raised to 0.5. Divided by 0 0.0739 raised to 0.5. Hi, Islamat. A VG which is believable, 9.20. Correct? So a VG which is 9.20. So this is different. This is also different. This will also be different. All right. So this is 9.20. Multiply it by 0.6. This would be, see, it's only 5.52. So, this will be now 5.52, right? A linear velocity of 5.52. But the area would still be very big. If this is the linear velocity at studying. Times 0. 0.6 of that, you will have this, 5.52. Volumetric flow rate. The density of the gas, it should be based on the density of the gas. Delta, 0. 0.07, siya. 3.9. Oh, sorry. The unit for the linear velocity is per second, feet per second. This is per second. So this is per second. Okay, we'll just convert. So your feet per second times 3,600, that would be your divisor for the 27,063.60. An area of 1.3, six, kindly check my value class. And that will give us a smaller diameter. One point three six So if you get to multiply it by four and divide it by pi and take the square root of our answer, that would be one point three one seven feet. Okay. So more or less comparable to what we got, what is there in the book. Okay, so the culprit is the packing factor, which I copied erroneously. So it should be 17, not point seventeen, but only 17. Okay. And there are, there are these very important things that you need to take note of. The unit of the resulting linear velocity should be in feet per second, that feet per hour. And there's no need for you to uh, convert 
the SI units of the viscosities as long as you use the SI unit for the density to get the kinematic viscosity unit of centistokes. So you see you have 8926. Okay. Any questions so far? As for the uh, flows, the flow rates that is being required here in the problem. So what should be the flow rate? How do we determine the flow rates? The flow rates that is given there in the problem are actually uh, without the flooding should be the flow rates of the entering streams because there's no way that you can determine the flow rate of the leaving streams because you only have one given information. So in this case, you need to determine the appropriate flow rate for these two without the flooding. So as I have written here, your GL to GG is 2.2. That's equivalent to L2 is to V1. So if you have the V1 already, so L2 to uh, V1 is equal to 2.2. And your L2 from here, your L2 is equal to 2.2 V1. The thing is we need to determine the flow rate V1 not in the flooding condition, but only 60% of the flooding condition. Now, how do we do you think how do we determine the V1, the flow rate at 60% flooding only? How do we determine it? I'll go back to this part of the solution. How do we determine the volumetric flow rate at 60% of flooding condition only? What do you do? If I may ask you, how do you find the volumetric flow rates or even the, I know, the mass flow rates? What would you do? And maybe what you could do is you solve it backwards. So you solve for the product of the AB with the V uh, used is this one, the 5.52. So this is the diameter, this is the area. We'll use this area, which is 1.36 square feet. Okay. So the area times the velocity will give you the volumetric flow rate. So the area is 1.36 square feet. I took it from there. And the linear velocity that you're going to use is 60% flooding. So that would be 5.52 uh, feet per second. So you will have here the volumetric flow rate V of V1. That's the volumetric flow rate of V1, which is, okay, we'll compute. 1.36 times 5.52. That would be 7.5. 51 uh, cubic feet per second. If you'll have this converted per hour, you will multiply that to 3,600. You will have 27,025.92. This is cubic feet per hour. Now, that's your volumetric flow rate. Now, you have this ratio. You have this ratio here. Sorry. You have this ratio 2.2 for L2 and V1, and L2 is 2.2 V1, so you can get L2 already. So L2 is equal to 2.2 of the value of the V1 that you got here, which is 27,025.92. 0 0.92. So this is the volumetric flow rate of your solvent at 60% flooding. 
you just made use of the ratio of the molar ratio of the two. So that would be times 2.2 and that would be 59,457. Uh, 59, 457.02. The thing is, these flow rates are volumetric flow rates. And normally, what the problem gives us are mass flow rates. So how are you going to convert from this uh, volumetric flow rates to mass flow rates? So I'll write here V1 so you get to see it in one page. 27.2. 27.025.92. So these are in cubic feet per hour. How do we convert this set of units to pound mass per hour? We have done it a while ago. How do we do it? This one is in cubic feet per hour. So how do we convert it to mass per hour? Check question, no? Multiply, so 3,600. How do you convert it to mass per hour? What would you do? Uh, density, miss. Okay, you make use of the density. So what will you do here in this case? You multiply by the density. So L2 is equal to 59,457.02 times the density. Since L is water, our density should be in pound mass because this is English. So we go back to the density of the water. Uh, pound mass per cubic feet. So 62.25. Okay, I will not anymore write the unit because anyway, it's pound mass per cubic feet. The cubic feet will cancel. For V1, you have 27,025.92. We multiply it to the density of air. So the density of air is 0 0.0739. And you will have your corresponding answers here. So your twenty-seven point oh sorry, twenty-seven zero two five point ninety-two multiplied to point zero seven three nine. That should be one thousand nine hundred ninety-seven point twenty-two pound mass per hour. This one, your column will not be flooded at this particular mass velocity. The problem gives us a um, velocity of 2,000. So that's a little bit higher than the 60% here because actually, theoretically, what is being used is just 50% at flooding. For this one, it would be really higher because your multiplier here is very high for the density of water so for your 59.457.02 times 62.25 you have we'll just place it in exponential value so 3.7170 times 10 raised to 6 so this is pound mass per hour for the density of the liquid water, no, for the mass flow rate of the liquid water at 60% flooding condition. So actually at the 2,000 pound mass per hour flow rate of the gas, your column is not yet flooded because it's just a little bit above the 60%, which is higher than the 50% requirement for the column to be flooded. Okay, so for the flow rates, this should be your answer. The flow rate of the gas and the water at 
60% flooding conditions. Okay? Uh, what is important in the use of the flooding correlation diagram and the table where we get the packing factor, what makes it very important is for us to be able to know the size of our column. And that has something to do with its diameter. Okay, so this would be the procedure for it. When I say procedure, it's really by procedure. So you just simply pick out the correct values from the correct table or diagram. Now, any question here on the topic of determining the column diameter, the size of the column? There's none. Okay, I will uh, update your slide later, the one that is uh, shared to you in Canvas by putting the sample problem there. That way, you can cross-check it with the solution uh, in this recording. Now I go back to the slide and continue with column height. Uh, the procedure in determining the column height is really very tedious, but I have already placed in Canvas a PDF copy of the screenshot of the procedure in determining the column height for your uh, information. Okay, So we'll go to that now. As for the flooding velocity for a tray tower, you will just have this particular procedure to follow. Obtain the tray factor K sub V, find the entrainment gas velocity given by this formula, and choose the diameter so that the velocity that you'll be getting is just 70% of the computed Vmax here. I leave it to you as a res is your responsibility to read the sample problem in Canvas on determining the diameter of a tray tower based on its flooding velocity. May our sample problem, see Jan, please on this. The approach is exa uh, not exactly the same, but more or less the same as that for the de determination of the diameter of the column based on the packing materials that are being used. That is in the case of the pack tower. So we can go. So this would be your uh, diagram for that. In the diagram, you also need the plate spacing, which the problem actually gives. You know, specify you know, some problem and plate spacing. So read the sample problem on this portion here of the design of your tower. Now we go to the column height. Uh, if you go to different sources, the handbook, Jan Kuplis, and even McCabe and determining the column height, there are a lot of procedures in determining the, the column height, even a lot of formulas to choose from. So you choose the formula which uh, will, of course, make use of the data that is provided in the problem. Why am I saying that? Because based in the handbook, you have several formulas in determining the column height. The Z, which is the column height, can be computed based on the product of the HG and the NG, HL and the NL. Now, you use the HG, NG product if the problem is on gas absorption. Uh, as such, because you have the subscript G here. You use the HL or A sub L and sub L formula if the problem is on stripping because that way, in this case, your feed is liquid. You use the formula hog nog when you are given gas absorption. You also use the hull null when you're given stripping. Okay, now what are these H sub G and sub G, H sub L and sub L, the hog nog or the hull null as we uh, shortly uh, read the formula. So they are all defined in here below. And you can see that we use only the those with subscripts L for stripping process. And for gas absorption, we use those that have subscript G. Your N sub G is the number of gas phase transfer units. And whenever you see the O together with the G, that's already the number of overall gas phase transfer units. The formula in determining the N sub G and the N sub OG are different. 
So, dapat ang paris-paris gid ang sundon. So, if you intend to multiply HG, it has to be with NG, not with NOG. If you intend to multiply NOG, it should be with HOG, not HG. Okay? Your H of G is the height of one transfer unit based upon gas phase resistance. So the reason why you're using the representations here with the subscript G on gas absorption is because your mass transfer is based on gas phase resistance because it's gas absorption. In stripping, of course, it would be phase, uh, it would be based on the liquid phase resistance. The definitions of the N's here and the H. It's the same as here with the different subscript, but only uh, it's for strip two. If you come to think of it, if you have the height of one transfer unit, the height of one transfer unit, that's the height equivalent in the column, which you consider as one mass transfer unit. If you multiply it to the number of transfer units, then that would be the overall height of your column. So I think it's very self-explanatory. The height of just one transfer unit multiplied to the number of transfer units will give you the height of your column. So if it's based on the overall gas phase resistance, then you'll be using the uh, representations which has the subscript O, the OG or the H with the subscript OG together with it. Okay, so please check on your handbook on the these formulas indicated in the corresponding equation. So your ANOG and your NOL, this is taken from Jian please. Really comparable to class the formula in determining the number of stages, if you recall, using the Crimson's equation. The formula is dependent on the gas absorption factor A, the Ys and the X, and the slope of the equilibrium <clears throat> line or curve. It's dependent on that. In your handbook, you can find the NOG and NOL on this equation and your HOG, HOL on this equation. Okay, please check on your handbook on this equations. Then for computing the tower height using film or overall mass transfer coefficients, for dilute solutions, you can refer to these equations in Jan please. And for concentrated solutions, you refer to these equations as well. I did not write it here anymore because there's just so many of them based on the specific application. Uh, we distinguish concentrated solutions from dilute solution and the fact that dilute solutions has concentrations which are less than or up to 10% only, while concentrated solutions have more than 10% as its concentration. Now, we can also use the HETP concept and finding the Z. So the HETP, however, class needs the hog. So if you're using HETP times N equation in determining your tower height, you must first determine the hog. So some would rather have the hog directly computed and solve for the nag and multiply the two. That would still be giving you the same Z. But if the problem gives you already the HETP, all you have to do is determine the theoretical number of, of trace or steps using Crimson equation and then multiply that HETP. Because what is this HETP? It's the height of your packing material equivalent to one theoretical stage. So this is how tall or how thick your packing material is inside your pack tower for it to be considered as one stage already. So if that particular height of packing material is multiplied to the theoretical number of stages determined using Crimson equation, then you'll be able to determine your column height. Okay, that's the Z. So the Z based on HETP times N. So it could be based on that. Okay. So this is same for both packed and tray tower and for parallel operating lines and equilibrium lines only. So it is suggested that you use this formula for the Z when your operating line and your equilibrium lines are parallel. 
if they are slightly not parallel to each other, there will be a slight variation in the Z, but isn't it's not that much. Okay, if you use this particular formula. That will be shown. Actually, that is shown in the PDF copy of the, I think, five different procedures of determining your uh, Z, which is already shared to you in Canvas. Because there's no way for me to have it photocopied as discussed with you last meeting because of the cancellation of classes. So this is a sample problem on determining the column height. I think for this sample problem, the answer is 3.07. Okay, wait, guys, ha? I'll just edit. Na, if this is 3.7 or 1.26. Let me project it again. I'm sorry, class. It's not shared to you. Okay. And on the next slide, we have this PDF copy of the procedure of finding the column height. Uh, let me click on this. Let's see if we can view, we can view it. So this is actually the procedure. So you have in here five different procedures or four different procedures, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken in determining the Z. So this is one procedure. Uh, the process is actually T juice. This is the second procedure. This is the third procedure using the HGNG. Uh, this is the fourth procedure using the HETPN. I had all of this used that way. I can illustrate to you how will the variation in the answers would be if I use different formulas. Will be there great variation or not? So, yes, I have. And this is the fifth. Okay. So, five different procedures of finding the Z. As to be expected, class C in the last procedure, step out na siya, ay tungod na determine na sa iba niya procedure ang inog dapat substitute sa iya. Actually, it's not that short because there's a lot of things that needs to be determined prior to determining the Z. We will discuss this. Um, we'll, we'll alter again the scheduling, our scheduling. This would have been fast. I could discuss this probably in an hour because everything is in here already. I need not write anything on the board. So the answer is 1.36 something. Wait, Tessa. Cover height. <coughs> These formulas here are based on GNP, please. Okay, aside from the formulas using HGNG and HETP, they all have more or less the same range of values. I will discuss this to you the next time we meet. I will check on our schedule and how can I modify the schedule that was given to you uh, last meeting. Uh, probably what I'm going to do I'll just quit sharing here because it's almost time. And I know you, your, your brain cannot anymore process what I'm going to share with you. So I'll just stop sharing.